How could God love me? I'm a thief. I'm a drug addict. I was trying to steal your camera. Those were the words that Gideon Rick McKay heard when he went to Bologna, Italy. Now, he's from Indiana, Rick, the Gideon is, and uh, I'm born and raised in the South, and that's not Bologna, that's Bologna. But, but he, here, here is Rick in Bologna, Italy. They went to hospitals, they went to hotels, they went to universities, they went wherever they could to give out Bibles, but another place is right out on the street corner. So here's Rick out on the street corner in Bologna, Italy, and uh, as he's uh, giving out Bibles, this was a few years back, so you young people wouldn't understand, he had what's called a camera that was in his pocket. And uh, the street thief saw him and said, I'm going to steal that guy's camera. So the street, th key, the street thief is uh, kind of coming up to Rick just about the time that Rick turns and sticks out this little testament. Now the street thief was taken aback and said, who are you? What's this book? Now, if you're a spirit-filled, born-again believer in Jesus Christ, and you've gone to Bologna, Italy, and somebody says, who are you and what's this book? Here's your opportunity. Jump right in. So he did. And the wonder of these uh, small testaments is that in the back, they have the plan of salvation. And it's basically the Roman roads as we know it. So that was Rick's opportunity. He says, you know, there is a God. And that's the way we have to start these days. Uh, people, well, I'm not sure on that. There is a God. God loves you. But sin has separated us from God. And then we all know John 3.16. For God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth on Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So he's having the conversation with this street thief. And uh, uh, about the third time uh, Rick said, God loves you. He said, well, how can God love me? I'm a, a thief. I'm a drug addict. I, I'm an alcoholic. And, <laughs> and Rick said, you, you're not listening. God doesn't, there, there's sin. You sin, I sin, we all sin. This isn't on a scale, good sin, bad sin. Uh, but God forgives us. And right there on that street, uh, Rick led that street thief to uh, salvation. And God does have a sense of humor. The street thief's name, Emmanuel. God with us. <laughs> so so that, that's just one of so many uh, testimonies we have. You know, we have the, these Bibles and you've seen them and, and we are not just a Bible distribution society. It is our purpose is to win men and women, boys and girls to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Now, the way we do it, we get together and meet uh, every Saturday morning. We pray at, at seven o'clock in the morning and, and come join that prayer. It's a short prayer time. Uh, read scripture, pray and get out of there because, you know, everybody's got a life. But uh, in, in these Bibles, it, it's amazing the testimonies we received. We received one just last year. Now, get this. In uh, May of 2022, James Weston went to a hotel here in Gainesville, Georgia. It's a Hampton out on Spout Springs Road. And he went there with a loaded pistol to kill himself. And he wrote, the, and we as Gideons go to the hotels and check the Bibles, make sure nobody's torn a page out, written something in them. But uh, one of the Gideons saw this Bible and saw this note. And so this is the note. It says in, in this handwritten, go to page 1062 in this Bible. And that's the full Bible. Uh, that's a lot of pages. Uh, I came to this place with my loaded 38 pistol to take my life. I had no way to go on with myself. Something, oh, somebody left this Bible in the room. I had always heard a verse, John 3.16. So I looked it up in the Bible, and as I read it, a word stood out about my life. Whosoever. That was me. So he died for me also. I then prayed, Lord, save me. And I'm so glad that the Gideons left the Bible. It has changed my life. Now that, that's right here. Uh, the Gideons around here have checked 
Google, all the other searches you can do. Who is this guy? And we still don't know, but, but he signed it James Weston. So praise God that, uh, that uh, there, there was a Bible. And who knows, the money that this church gave, New Holland Baptist, could have been the money that, put, <laughs> that went into that Bible. <laughs> but uh, it, it, it's, it's amazing the, uh, the, the, the testimonies we have. Where'd the Gideons come from? 1800s, no cars. Two guys are riding a train. They get off the train. They're businessmen, traveling businessmen. They go to a hotel close to the railroad tracks because you're not going to hail a cab or you jump on a horse if you wanted to. But that's how long ago this started. And they get to the hotel, and the, and the hotel man says, there's one room with two beds. And the two guys looked at each other, and they said, is that okay? Yeah, it's okay with me. So I just want a place to, to, to lay down and sleep. So they go in the room. One of them pulls out a Bible and starts reading. The other says, oh, I see you're a Christian. And mamas, listen to this. The man's response was, yes, my mother told me, you will pray every day and you will read the Bible every day. And I said, yes, mom. And there, so there, there they are in the hotel, 1800s. And they got to talking. Wouldn't it be neat if there was a Bible up at the lobby and, you know, people could go get the Bible from, from the, the lobby. Well, there was a Tri-County Ministerial Association, and, and this is up in Wisconsin, Michigan, Wisconsin, somewhere that, that I've never been, way up, way up there. And uh, anyway, the Bi Tri-County Bible Association, they, they said, you guys aren't thinking big enough. You're businessmen. You're out there going up and down the roads and go to places. We're just kind of sitting here in the church. If we take up a collection... You, uh, you take that, get the Bibles printed and get them out there. We said, wow, that's cool. So it, in the first, it, we, we think that it was somewhere in the 1920s when the first one million, that's with an M, a million Bibles was distributed by God, by God through the Gideons. It, it, we're just people that kind of show up and, and lead me Lord. So, uh, but the, the amazing thing, it took 80 years, but in 2001, in God's timing, why, why 2001? You, you scratch your head. But in 2001, the first one billion, that, that's a thousand million Bibles by God through the Gideons. Well, that was, that was impressive. 2015, just 14 years later, Two billion. If you want to chart that, it looks like that. And why? Because God said, my word is going to every nation, every kindred, every tongue, every tribe. And you and I are seeing it. it, it, it <laughs> my knees are trembling. Mm. Mm. A guy from uh, Gideon from Lumpkin County, he's probably been here and spoken before. He went to Tanzania, Africa, and uh, they, they got permission to go to schools and give out Bibles. And you, you just don't know foreign countries. You, we get up in the morning, uh, we've we got an air conditioner going or the heater going and a roof over our heads. And we go to the refrigerator and open it up and it's full of food. And we go take a hot shower and go over this little room and flush this and that goes away. And we think that's the way the rest of the world lives. That is not the way the rest of the world lives. But here, here's uh, a Mike. He's gone to uh, Tanzania, Africa. They got permission to give out Bibles in this school, and they get there, and the headmaster is a Muslim headmaster, and he says, uh, no, nah, y'all y'all aren't going to uh, do a distribution here. This, this is a Muslim school. And they said, well, looky here. We've got a piece of paper <laughs> that says we can. Yeah, you're not going to give them out here. So you got three choices then. You're going to fight, and that, that's a bad Christian example. Uh, you're going to uh, uh, just stand there, or are you going to leave? And the, that, that third one is pray. So they just sat down and started praying, Lord, and here we are. We, and, and you're in a dirt floor building. There's no copy machine going and, and lights flashing here. <laughs> Lord, we're here. We've got permission to come here, and this headmaster uh, is not letting us. And after about five or ten minutes of prayer, the guy says, okay, we'll go to one classroom. 
great. So they go down the hall and they do a short presentation, much like Rick that I told you about earlier, that, that God's plan, God's love. And the headmaster is over there listening. Well, they got through and the headmaster says, all right, you Muslim children go out there and play in the yard and anybody else, y'all can receive a Bible. They came out and started praying again. Okay, let's go down to the second room. Well, as they went into the second room, he didn't tell anybody to leave the room. So, Y'all just listen. So, same plan. They gave out many Bibles, many Testaments there. They come out of that second room. There's only three rooms in the whole building. He says, well, come on, let's go down to the third room. And the headmaster goes in and says, these guys are going to tell you uh, about the God of this Bible. And when they're done, take one of the Bibles. How does that happen? God's, well, <laughs> just <laughs> that struck. Wasn't planning this, but uh, at our, we just had a convention. Uh, we have a state convention once a year. And there was a, uh, I'm still trying to figure out who the speaker was. He was either from Africa or India. I, I did not know, but a well-educated fellow. And he was at a college where he had received a testament. And he said, I was very frustrated. I could read all street books. I could read all these books and understand them, but I could not understand this book. So I would re read this book and I would put it down and it frustrated me that I could not understand it. So I read my chemistry books and I read these books and I read that book and I could not understand it. And then he said about the 10th time that he was reading it, Word of God touched his heart. And he, he's now a Gideon from wh whatever country he is. And what a testimony that was. Not, not a lot of emotion or, or anything. You could tell this was, this was a learned, educated man. That, what, what, what is this? And why do I keep it, picking it up? And why do I keep reading it? Praise God. Praise God. God is so good. I wonder, everybody should wonder, how can you give out that many testaments? And uh, we have a testimony from uh, Kenya, Africa. And while we have um, Saturday morning meetings, we also have once a month, usually a dinner meeting, the, uh, our wives, which are auxiliary members, and then just wives, just a kind of a, it's more of a loose get together uh, type meeting. But this Kenya uh, Gideon was apologizing. He said, I only gave out 1,556 testaments last month. I could only get two boxes on my bicycle at a time. And I've just got this vision of this uh, faithful Gideon riding this bicycle with two boxes of these testaments uh, on, on the back and, and giving them out. That's, uh, that's the kind of faithfulness. And speaking of faithful, uh, Simon Kabutu, one of uh, the Gideons, he's from Madison County, went, went to one of the uh, countries in Africa. And uh, when he, you get there, there are local Gideons. They know the customs. They, they know the language. Uh, th that's the beauty of it. And in, in, in some of these uh, Islamic countries, uh, there's people you can give a Bible to and you're okay. And there's people uh, you give a Bible to, you go to jail or worse. So here, here's uh, uh, Larry from Madison County, and he's in uh, one of the nations in Africa. And the guy that's driving him around in the car, a local Gideon, they've found a, a warehouse to put the Bibles in. So the money that the church gives uh, goes to those Bibles and, and they're shipped there and, and, and put in a warehouse. Then a group of Gideons get together and, and go there and with the local Gideons distribute the Bibles. So the local Gideon is Simon Kabutu. And after the second day, Larry says, you know, Simon, you haven't mentioned anything about a wife or a girlfriend. Do you, you know, what's, what's your marital status? And he, and he says, well, you'll, you'll probably, this will probably sound strange to you, but here in, in our country, we, we have a, a dowry that we give, and I'm in the process of saving enough money for the, the dowry. And I said, well, what's the dowry? And he says, it's eight 
cows. Larry, being the American that we are, so he says, well, how, how, how are you doing? He says, well, I've paid for six, and there's, I need money for two more. And immediately, what do we do? We just pull out our wallet, just, just a little more money. How much could a cow in Africa cost? shouldn't have done this testimony. Simon says, nah, I can't take your money. That wouldn't cost my service to my Lord anything if you gave me that money. So thank you, but no thank you. And I just don't understand that. I'm an American. I had the opportunity to go to uh, Dominican Republic, and we were having a great time. We're giving out Bibles. The kids, the kids, you know, they got these blue navy blue pants on, and either a, a white shirt or a plaid, whatever the boys and girls wear, standing there, and we're giving out Bibles, and they're just taking them. And uh, we got to one school, and I looked around and thought, oh, this isn't good. It <laughs> looks like there's more kids than there are Bibles. And sure enough, we were running out. <clears throat> little girl standing there in front of me. Por favor, senor, una Biblia. And we didn't have a Bible. And she cried, and I cried. And you don't forget stuff like that, because I knew we were going to go out and get in a car, and go to the warehouse, but not come back to this school. We're going to that school. We we got more schools to go to. This uh, handout that we got <clears throat> from the Gideon says, if your daily income was three dollars and ninety-two cents, would you spend it on a bowl of rice or a Bible? If you worked all day and your daily income was three dollars and ninety-two cents. You wouldn't have money for a Bible. And you've, you've heard, we're in about 200 countries in the world. And in 44 of those countries, $3.92 is the average daily income. That's not 44 families. That's 44 countries. And we are so blessed. Uh, you say, oh, bless me, Lord. We're, we're spoiled. We just are. And uh, uh, to, you, uh, I've only been out of the country once, that one time to Dominican Republic, and they were so grateful, so, so, so wanting to, to, to receive a Bible. These uh, Orange Testaments, if you've been to a, a county festival uh, or in Jackson County, we have Art in the Park at Hurricane Shoals. Y'all, uh, y'all still have Mule Camp Days? Is that still... Anyway, the, the, a lot of these are given out at, at uh, functions like that. Um, the Green Testaments, uh, universities. And uh, I would ask that you pray for the University of Georgia. Uh, in the past, we have sent 70 to 80 Gideons there, and they'd be on all the street corners get, just giving out testaments. Well, that's changed now. Uh, if you've heard of the free speech area, it's about the size of this uh, choir loft. They let four Gideons are allowed to stand around the free speech area and give out testaments. There were, 10 years ago, we went out and, and we're there at six o'clock in the morning. We're gone by 12 noon. We gave out 10,000 testaments. We don't give out 1,000 testaments now. And that's uh, a sign of the times. But Pray for all the universities, <clears throat> uh, Gainesville College, uh, North, North Georgia College, that change the name constantly. I, um, if you've seen these white testaments, the nurses have them. Our wives in the auxiliary give these out. And if you go to a doctor's office or a dentist's office and you see the, uh, th these testaments, those were put there by the ladies in the auxiliary. So uh, uh, 
a, a final testimony on what God can do. Uh, we were at J. Moore Farms 10 years ago at, at a, a meeting there, and, and the guy there was from Australia. He was David Jarrett. He was fun to listen to in his speaking. But uh, <clears throat> he was talking about New Caledonia, and I've heard New Caledonia. don't even know where on the map it is, but it's somewhere down there in the, uh, the Australia area. But in New Caledonia, the local Gideons prayed for French Bibles to distribute. That's their language. And it's a small island. France is the only language spoken there. A shipment of Gideon Bibles arrived, and the Gideons were ex excited to see 2,000 of these testaments. Uh, then they opened them, and they were in Spanish. Now, what, what are you going to do just to ship them uh, is, is, is such a high cost you're just going to, they're, they're, they're of no use. So th they didn't know what to do. Uh, the local president of, called uh, David Jarrett to tell him uh, of, you know, his disappointment. And uh, they, they thought, well, let, are we going to dump them in the ocean? About that time, a ship came in, and this was an Argentine ship. And uh, the local Gideon president was told that the Argentine ship needed 2,000 Spanish testaments. You know, God has a way of just knowing when and where. So uh, uh, that's, that's the beauty of the Gideon ministry. I've got a picture here from Franklin Graham. It shows uh, a cross on top of a, a, a building in Iraq that at one time Saddam Hussein owned, that is, Jesus is the light of the world uh, in Arabic. So, you know, what, what, what's this, uh, the Iraq thing and our troops there? God always has a way. Uh, here's Franklin Graham, and he was in China. You know, the Chinese, those poor, confused communists there. But anyway, they'll, they'll uh, stamp out home churches, but they'll let Franklin Graham come and speak. And uh, Franklin said, uh, the next day on what would have been my mother's 90th birthday, I preached to more than 5,000 people at a joyful worship service at the Central Church of Huan. Didn't know there was such a, ch such a church, but uh, I was, uh, you know, I, I'm a child of the 60s and 70s, so getting into Russia was impossible. Oh, we'll never get into there. Well, when the when that Berlin when that wall came down, the Bibles just flooded in, and now into China, um, it's uh, God. God. God is an amazing God. Uh, how many? Uh, uh, Times have, have people said we're going to stamp out the the the, the Christian faith. Uh, one of the in the third century, a Roman emperor Diocletian had a coin stamp that Christianity is is dead. So much for Diocletian. Uh, the French Revolution. There was a guy Voltaire, and he was kind of the French leader of the revolution. He said. We will eradicate the Bible from the minds of the people. <clears throat> he also said. Uh, a hundred years after I'm dead, the Bible and Christianity will be extinct on planet Earth. Well, 50 years after Mr. Voltaire died, the Geneva Bible Society bought his house and the printing presses inside. And the very same printing presses that were used for this God is dead foolishness, they started printing Bibles. So, uh, so... Uh, God is in command. Uh, the Great Commission, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And thank you, church, for uh, supporting the Gideons. I have an application here, and I know somebody here wants to come up and sign this ab application and become a part of the Gideon ministry. Now, the pastor gave me just a little bit of uh, grace to talk about me. And uh, I'm the guy that been in church all my life. And uh, you obviously can tell I, I talk a lot. So uh, 
if, if there was a time in church where they said, well, we need somebody to, to say something about the first chapter of John or to or, uh, say a prayer or to sing along with, don't, you don't want to hear me sing, but I, I knew the songs, I knew the prayers, I knew the words, I didn't know Jesus. And uh, 42 years old, I'm sitting in my house in commerce in the basement watching some TV preacher. I couldn't tell you who he was. But he, when he got through, he said, what about you? And I'm sitting alone in the basement, so I figured he was talking to me. And it was then that finally I said, God, I'm sorry. I have cursed you. I have mocked you. And all you've ever done is bless me. Weren't any fireworks, weren't any... Okay, that was... Got up the next morning. <laughs> As I did, I told you I read, read, I did read the Bible. Read, opened up the Bible and oh my goodness, it was alive. And uh, that's why uh, when, when asked, when did I become a Gideon? 19, it was 1994. And I knew the, who the Gideons were and they were nice people, but whatever they had, I didn't have it. And I knew that. But uh, come 1996, I became a Gideon, and it's uh, it's been a wonderful time since then. Uh, thank you, church. Uh, God bless you, and uh, the Word of God will not be stopped.